Good evening, folks. We are here today with Mr. Pradeep Bordaloi of the Congress. I guess we don't have to give him a formal introduction. We all know who he is. He's been an old timer in the Congress. He started his politics as, as a student leader in the Cotton College, going back to the 1978 and 79, and after that in the JNU. And then from there, his career in politics have literally started off and today he is the Congress MP from Nogao and he was also the chairperson of the Congress campaign committee in the recently concluded Assam Assembly elections. We will talk to him about his experiences in politics, where is Assam in so far as the political life of Assam is concerned, about the Congress and going forward, where does he see the Congress and himself in the political landscape of Assam? Welcome, Mr. Bordoloi. Thank you. Welcome. It is so nice to have you and like, we'll tell the viewers, like they see both of us are masked up. I think yes. it is very important yes. for us to be wearing a mask, yes. uh, to keep ourselves safe, our family safe, our neighbors safe and everyone safe. That is, I think, one of the best protection that we can have, like the doctors and medical experts have been telling us. But because we are in his house and talking to him, this is a relatively safe environment. It's been sanitized. So during the course of the discussion, probably we'll take off our mask and continue the discussion. Yes, of course. And we are also maintaining a distance. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, just to start off with, uh, you know, I mean, it's good to start off with the current. We are in extraordinary times. And uh, during yeah. these extraordinary times, we've uh, had to literally also go through the process of elections. You yourself have been so busy with the Congress campaign. And now when we're waiting for the results on the 2nd of May, we just two days, I guess, one day, that's tomorrow. One day, one day. Uh, we've also seen what the exit poll is showing. Most of the pollsters have given the NDA and its allies the numbers. The Congress and its allies, the Mahajot, as we're calling it, seems to be behind. Uh, how do you look at the scenario unfolding after tomorrow? See, uh, the exit poll, so-called exit poll, see the unfortunate situation prevails in the country today that who conducted the exit poll? And if you see the results, all those uh, media houses in the national canvas, unfortunately, you know, everything they do, you always take it with a pinch of salt because the credibility, I'm talking about the credibility of these media houses. Very really unfortunate, never before this kind of situation prevailed in our country. Everybody, all the ma major ones, you know, they seem to be so biased, not because of this, not because that there has been an adverse uh, exit poll uh, against Congress. I'm not saying about this, but whatever they do, whatever they say, the vast, for the vast majority of our people in the country today, across the country, they take it with a pinch of salt because they know that all these media houses, very unfortunately, they are basically tom tom boys of uh, Modi Sahab and the ruling BJP. Having said that, uh, you know, when the exit poll results were out, we were, of course, we were upset. Then we tried to find out, you know, exactly because we have our own people across the state. So, basically, uh, the methodology, methodology is very unscientific. They actually never uh, took, you know, their response, their, their sample sizes are very small. There was no scientific methodology. So, that is why the exit poll uh, results, whatever they have said, I, for one, is uh, very skeptical. And they have, uh, they actually wanted to mount a psychological war and they have a vested interest but, in but sir do you think a psychological war will actually have any impact because we are talking about numbers and you've just said you're skeptical fair enough you're skeptical i'm talking about psychological yes, why i want to right, you know right why what was the motive what is very simple you see all across the state in the polling booths counting halls you know, if you give a such uh, 
adverse thing, giving you know uh, overwhelming majority to the BJP, that would have a very psychological impact on the Congress counting agents everywhere. They will be, they will get demoralized. They will not be vigilant. They would, in fact, they would give away. They would, you know, just probably leave the counting hall. So, what are you doing about this? Are you no, trying? We are, to we are trying to prevent it. That is number one. And number two, the most sinister game, I, as I feel, is the bureaucracy. Because see, whatever probably Bihar is a very, you know, Bihar is one example. You see, the bureaucracy play a very important uh, role in the counting. If especially if it's a touch and go affair, because. Uh, because bureaucracy, if they are told, uh, look, there is no hope, uh, BJP is going to form the government, a vast majority of the bureaucracy actually are, actually are fancy -tours. So the moment they see, you know, this kind of thing is going to happen, you know, they may change. But sir, don't you think, I mean, we will of course see what happens after tomorrow. All of us are yeah, waiting yeah. Uh, to see what really unfolds. But uh, now, f what you were saying, Going by what you're saying, the argument that you've put across, that uh, the media, you don't trust the media today because the media, a lot of them... No, no, no I'm so not just saying about anti media. Yeah, I, I know, well, I just wanted to, I totally agree. The media today is divided and we cannot disagree. National media is an alliance so, partner, let so, me tell you. So you're talking about the national media, true, you're yeah. talking about the media we've seen, mm -hmm. there's been talk about the media, that's one. Then you're talking also about the bureaucracy. So don't you think people will say that the Congress are already... I am, what, no, 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 I am not know, blaming the bureaucracy, but you must understand, the bureaucracy manning the counting halls, when once they are, you know, this kind of ambience is created that, you know, BJP is getting overwhelming majority, BJP is again coming back. You know, even if there is an objectivity in them, even if there is a rationality in them, they tend to, I'm not generalizing again, I must say that I'm not generalizing, but many of the bureaucracy may take side. This, uh, this is my experience. I have seen it. You take the example of Bihar. That is what I wanted to give this example. But what is the election commission doing about it? Have you not told the election commission that, look, we have these concerns? These concerns could be genuine because they're your concerns. How do you think is the election, election commission, commission responding to your appeals or to the different complaints or let's say but, even the concerns? But don't that you agree? Them? Don't you agree with me? The election commission of India also takes side in favor of BJP. We have, there, are, there are many, many examples, many, many examples. You see, RSS, BJP, they have been infiltrating into all institutions of the country today, all democratic institutions. But it, would it not be unfair on the election commission which has to I, 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 I have no qualms. I have no qualms because I have seen how they take very partisan ways. We have given, for some elections, we have given hundreds of complaints they don't pay heed to their complaints. Can you cite one, two examples? Many, many, many. When, uh, you know, uh, Morigaon district, the police, the police were threatening our Congress people. They were, you know, the, their particular two thanas, Jagiro thana. On the election day? Before that. Before, before that. that. They were forbidding our people not to, you know, come out and uh, work for the Congress party. We have given written complaints. We have named the police officer. But election commission was totally mum. Take the case of Mon uh, Minister Himanto Sharma. He was openly flouting everything, you know, he's threatening, threatening a political leader. You know, Hagrama, how he uh, threatened Hagrama for. Uh, but he was suspended from no, campaigning. Not suspended. 48 hours initially. Well, it was reduced. Uh, reduced. Mm -hmm. Just, just one uh, later, immediately reduced and he was allowed to participate. But the BJP is saying the same thing, sir, that there were complaints against the Congress no. and that the Election Commission has not responded to the no, complaints. No, because Congress people, I'll tell you, our leaders have never flouted the rules. We are, we are law-abiding people and this is our discipline. We have not done. Let, let them point out that this is the way our leader has done anything. When COVID thing was, you know, raging the country, what did our leader say? Immediately called up their meeting. Did you expect, did you, uh, do, uh, do you, have you got this kind of responsibility from the earlier, from uh, Prime Minister Modi? He was complimenting lakhs of people. He was very happy that lakhs of people have turned out without mask, without any COVID. But protocol. the Congress rallies also had people without masks. No, we did. No the, moment, we did the moment it was registered, we, re we cancelled all our meetings. We were, you know, we were taking caution. And don't forget, 
that in Assam, the COVID was, you know, pers- you know, it was actually getting into Assam. They knew it. They, uh, you know, they they came to know about it. There were absolutely, many cases. Can I, can, I, can I just, just stop you there, sorry, and because this is a very important point that you mentioned and I'd like to also tell our viewers that this particular point has been spoken time and again in the recent times and it will be spoken by different people because we've heard politicians say that election rallies don't make a difference in so far as COVID, COVID is concerned. That is what they've said. They've said that they've done samplings to find out or they've actually got data to show that there is no infection from the rallies. Now from what you've said and from what the medical experts are saying is that an external agent looks for an ecosystem. It looks for an environment in which it can thrive. So if you have people, if you have gatherings, that's where the external agent will come and thrive. So do you think the election rallies cutting across party lines, BJP, Congress, let's say in Bengal, the TMC, I mean of course we're talking about Assam, but in the country, all the political parties that are still doing some rallies don't you think that provides the ecosystem and the environment for the virus to come and thrive and therefore we are all responsible of course we are responsible particularly the people who are in power i will i want to tell you thing they were actually trying to play it down i am talking about assam take the case of assam it is now established there is evidence that by second fortnight of march you know this the second strain of uh, this present COVID uh, thing were already over the places. There were many cases. The second strain of second the virus. COVID. You know, it was there. It was affecting people. But then they played it out. They feigned as if nothing was happening. And what did the minister, the health minister say? That, you know, he gave an interview to a national TV also. He said, no, Assam, there is no COVID. He says, what is the use of wearing masks? Can you, can you expect to hear this kind of irresponsible words from a health minister? Can you expect the prime minister to, to behave like this on so the 17th we, of April? We when have a reservations on that. Everybody has expressed the reservations. No, Different people. He has highly, defined, he no, has defined no, I want himself. to tell you what I mean. Not, yeah, because, yeah. not because I am in opposition and I am pointing out. Because these BJP stalwarts, the ministers, whether it's in Assam or Mr. Modi and Amit Shah and company, they behaved in a very irresponsible manner. And don't forget, what did the Madras High Court say? They castigated the election commission because they couldn't have castigated the prime minister. They castigated the election commission. You said the impartial of election commission. Why didn't the election commission state it? Why didn't they give the stricture? Sir, if I also can ask you a question here, because you are raising some very important and very very pertinent points. So if you think and look, the Madras High Court and also the Delhi High Court, they've pulled up the election uh, commission. Uh, They've said that this is almost, this almost is, uh, they've linked it to murder. Uh, If you feel that the election commission was impartial, if you're not happy with the election commission, don't you think as a responsible party, the oldest party in the country, you can actually take this matter up legally, go to the Supreme Court and say that, look, we want to investigate and find out why the Election Commission did not take actions during these times which could have which could have been dangerous or probably it ha- these are situations that have led to the present. See, Election Commission also, not only Madras High Court says, if, if you are a conscientious citizen, you also find out. They behaved also in a very irresponsible manner. They should have stayed. But what in. are you doing as a responsible no, party? No, we are. We are. That, we are in the middle of an election. We cannot stop the election. Is it because election is also important? But election commission, as an impartial body, they should have stayed in. They should have given the strictures. But on our own, from the Congress party, on our own, take the example of Mr. Rahul Gandhi, unilaterally called off his meetings and he was a subject of ridicule by then, by the BJP. But sir, a lot of your party members were not listening to him. They were also out there with people. No, wait, they were wait. When leader, and we are not just talking about Assam, we are talking about the no, entire nation. When, when, leader, when leader says something, we all follow. And that is why immediately we toned down, because initially we were assured that there was no COVID. And this assurance came none other than the health minister of the Prime Minister. Imagine on the 17th of April when this COVID thing was raging, he allowed the Kummela, you know, Kummela to, uh, to, to carry on like this. But, the, but the farmers people. are protesting, the Congress is supporting the farmers. And farmers they are, are protesting, but have you seen the farmers now? 
they have they are maintaining the covid protocol you go to the street now but they are still together there's no physical they're, distance no they are they are they are they are i think they are behaving in a very responsible manner all right sir we'll come to that i mean these are very important issues and it's so nice because you are not just a state leader you are a national leader you've been a cabinet minister uh, you've held some very important portfolios uh, you've been in the state as a state legislature there's so many things that <clears throat> one needs to talk to you and also understand in terms of the political landscape of the state and where the country is also going today sir just to digress a little bit i would like to ask you from your own experience in politics for so long where do you see the state and uh, do you think politically somewhere assam we talk about development all right we talk about so many other issues but we talk about talking about Assam's life in politics because Assam has contributed to India's independence struggle we have gone through the transition together with the country but do you feel that we are missing out something or we are really uh, not in a position to say that we have matched up with the rest of the country i will tell you but before that you have to understand the assam that we have today You see, I would just I would like you to recall that twenty years and twenty years ago in Assam, you know those Assam agitation, the Ulfa, the secret killings, and Assam was in turmoil all the time. You know, I'm talking about pre two thousand one era. Assam was in turmoil. Then the Congress Party, what did we do? We say that the basic paradigm that we used to have earlier. there was no investment there was no uh, economy was you know at the at the lowest ebb and then nothing people were very insecure there were killings there were kidnappings uh, common citizen you know the shops and bazaars would close by 5 pm i'm talking about those days 20 years ago then the congress party what did about assam you see the traditional paradigm about assam was that first we have to establish peace then development will come so that is why all these discussions were there but there were all kind of unsocial elements were always creating problems then that time congress party decided that we will reverse the paradigm change the paradigm how congress party said that come what may first development and peace will automatically follow you know it changed the paradigm and it worked and that's why 2001 development was a major trust and peace automatically followed the ulfa the different you know underground organization they came to the table because we ushered an era of development but that's exactly what mr himanto biswa and the no, nda claim that they brought in development no, no, and not whatever all the, see see the statistics see the statistics the uh, state domestic product prior to 2001 was 1% it was not moving I'm talking about the period 90s. But the GDP has grown during the NDA times as well. I no, mean. but take my figure. You, I can be, you know, I can take my figure. After 2001, in Assam, Assam state domestic product, the you know the annual uh, increase, it went. And do you know around 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, we registered a double-digit growth in Assam. Now, what is the GDP? What is the state domestic product do in Assam? Three percent, two percent is again going down. There is a recession They all are, over the world. Recession is all right, yeah. but we are not growing. See the unemployment. <laughs> unemployment has become a huge giant now. Forty odd lakhs unemployment never happened in Assam. All the industries, all the business establishment, you know, trade, commerce, the economic activities have shrunk. and why do you think money. has it shrunk because we talk i mean if we look at how let whichever government we see the transition we see that there has been development otherwise people would have not voted for let's say the congress or the bjp there's been some amount of, i would not say the congress for so many years the congress has been in power it would be wrong to say like politically or your oppos- opposition keeps on saying that what has the congress done for 70 years i mean if 70 years if you have not had infrastructure where we we would not have been anywhere so there definitely there's been some development there's been infrastructure and the bjp has taken off from there but why are you saying this that today we are having a and you are saying and which is right we have a problem of unemployment there are no jobs Why are we in this situation? You see what BJP RSS has done. 
they have taken the pasupat astra you know they have taken the brahmastra what is this to win election how do you do it in a state like assam they are you know they are not mitigating the plight of the common people they are not addressing the major problems that affect the people of assam like unemployment the farmers but problem. why are people voting no, for them no no i'm coming to it what have they done for last 4 5 years because they have not been able to solve these problems instead of that they have taken to this polarization you know it's an opium they very very slowly they started giving this opium and how do you but is you, that only why people are voting for them no i'm talking about because see what do they say their their entire political narrative is to divide the entire state into 35% that's not my figure 35% versus 65% and they have you know they have tried to drill in this kind of poison this kind of opium of religious polarization to hide all the basic failures that they have been you know basically and how much of that impacted in the current elections do you think the polarization made a difference in it so far it might have affected but not the way you know it it happened in 2016 do you see all the time a minister like himanta sharma you remember every time there's a, a, a anything he utters or he was only talking about polarization but so your opposition and the detractors are saying the same thing that you have aligned with the aiudf and therefore you are also part of the polarization First thing, politics we do not consider aiudf as a communal organization like rss i'll tell you why but in the past you have always kept away from the no, we kept away for political reason but not on what the has changed now sir? no no it is it is it is that we have to pull down the bjp from assam and we have formed a grand alliance on the basis of common minimum program but i want to tell you again coming back to this communal thing that you were saying who's no i'm not saying no, i'm no. saying the I'm just, i want i want to answer right. this mm-hmm. who's communal who indulges in communal politics you see AIUDF may have represented a downtrodden community of their own okay but have you ever seen a responsible leader of AIUDF trying to fan communal hatred towards other communities to to create features to so say that you go and kill the hindus or uh, and break the mandir or break the whatever nobody has done it they are just trying to uplift they may be hand holding you know gesture on them to uplift their down to community weak community but they have never fan the communal patience but sir, in the like, past the congress has also said sorry but the congress has also said there have been number of instances and these are all part of historical records where the congress has said that the iudf is a gets its support from migrants it's a party that is connected to migrants and that has been one of the issues that the congress has uh, flagged at different times the bjp is doing it now but today because here with the idf there's, there's a difference there's a difference between migrants and what bjp's politics is bjp is just trying to polarize the entire state and they want to rupture our social fabric that has been the thing and by doing this they would like to camouflage they would like to hide their failures because they have never addressed the basic problems that affected the common people of assam so yeah. you're saying so this alliance that you've had again coming back to the alliance the alliance that you've had uh, or rather you have with the aiudf it will actually work for you and after tomorrow it should but yeah. again unlike uh, like bjp i want to you know bjp has been saying that aiudf is communal and congress is a muslim party this kind of thing but don't forget our alliance the grand alliance there are 10 stakeholders and most progressive political parties of the country are our alliance partners along with udf so why only single out ai udf there are cpi there are cpim there are cpi ml there is bpf there are other parties so and and then so it is a grand so alliance. why only uh, 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 Mr Bordolo is saying why only single out the AIUDF there are so many other stakeholders in the Mahajot in the Grand yes, Alliance yes. so let's just ask him about uh, the new regional parties or the new parties that have emerged out of the anti CA movement like the Rajyot Dal 
like the Assam Jatiya Parishad, these are parties that have emerged. Don't you think these parties will also have an impact in your votes because you have also gone on an anti-CA platform and they have also come out of that movement and their issue, that has been the primary issue in so far as they are concerned, these parties are concerned. Don't you think they will split your votes and therefore this could actually impact the overall results? There is a very famous comment of, uh, rather infamous comment of Himanto Sharma. It's very unfortunate. What did he say? In the middle of elections, he gave an interview to one of the TV channels of Assam. What did he say? He said, these two so-called regional political parties have been the outcome of BJP's design. And why these two uh, so-called regional political parties didn't give the rebuttal? Why didn't they, you know, say that is not true? I'm not blaming them. I'm not saying that they, you know, but you see, we share a lot of common uh, programs. Like we are Congress Party, Townsley, and TCAA, and we have made it very clear. In fact, the five guarantees that we have given to the people of Assam, if we come to power, number one guarantee is to basically uh, repeal the CAA in the parliament and before that we will we have said to the people of Assam that we will not allow the car the CAA to be implemented in Assam being if you if you come how from. will you repeal it sir because this is a central law now this is a statute how would you I'm what, what are the steps the steps have not been very clear because we have interviewed uh, your uh, leaders have come from the center they have I mean it is still on record that some of them have said that we will repeal this act all right but we will do it through the state assembly how do you repeal a law i'm coming to you yeah, right number one when we come to power when we form the government we will see to it no matter what modi sahabs and amit Shah, you know staying in delhi would say his government will say we will not allow this to be implemented in Assam. that's a number one guarantee and how will you do it of course we will not implement the police will be ours administration will be ours how can you know, we will not allow the central agencies to come. We will not allow. Simply, we will not allow. We will defy the government of India in this regard. You know, even if it's a federal law. But second thing, second thing is this, that second thing is may not be possible immediately. But when the Congress party attains a majority in the parliament, because this, if it has to be repealed, it has to be brought back to the parliament. You have to have the numbers in parliament. Of course, that's what I'm saying. That's the second stage. But as and when we get the majority in 2024, as we hope so, okay? But 2024 is a long time because one day, one week in politics makes no, a no. huge I'm difference. I'm saying we have, we have set out the agenda. That's what I'm saying. First, when we form the government... Will you bring a resolution to, let's say, just to make it a little clearer for viewers? Yeah. Would, are you planning or is there a plan to bring a resolution, like you're saying, you'll defy? How will you defy legally speaking? Or constitutionally speaking? Very constitutionally what? We will just not allow. Police will be our. We will, we will give security security to everybody in Assam, All irrespective right. of caste, creed and something. All right, we understand we that. We will not allow, because apparatus will be in our hands. True, sir, you will understand we that. We will not allow Modi Saab or Amit Saab, how can they come into Assam when our government is here in Assam? All right, so when your government is in Assam, if you come to power, you will not allow it. Fair. Second thing, um, second thing, <laughs> along with this, when we have the majority in the Assembly, of course, we will adopt a resolution in the in the uh, in, in the Assam Assembly, we will take cabinet decision. We said we will not do this. We will not allow CAA to be like other some states like Kerala yes, or the others have yes, taken yes, a position. Yes, All right, yes. sir. But uh, the car has been one of the emotive issues, cuts across sentiments across the spectrum, social spectrum in the state. But the NRC is equally a sentimental issue for everybody the indigenous people, the people who are here, and also for people that maybe see the NRC as a lifeline. Why is the Congress silent on the NRC? Because the NRC, let me just tell you, that the NRC, the way it was implemented, everybody welcomed the NRC initially, like you know, everybody said, okay, this is something which will finally solve our problem of identity, who's who, who's an Assamese, who's from the state. But we've seen how this process was implemented. It has left a trail of suffering. Why are you not speaking on the, we the are We are very clear about it. We support the NRC, but at the fake end, when BJP was in power, 
they try to destabilize the entire process of NRC. That is number one. And number two, you see, why for us, the Congress Party, the Assam Accord of 1985 is a Bible, Quran, or Gita, or whatever you say, okay? Because the Assam Accord has been a time-tested conflict resolution formula in Assam. And that probably that is Assam Accord has ushered in an era of peace and you know assimilation in Assam. You know, BJP initially, you know, they all vouched for Assam Accord. Okay, but once they came to power in 2016, they are trying to start start up the entire issue and they want to negate the Assam Accord. That's why they have brought So, what are you scene. doing about Clause 6? Sir? Have you done anything? Are you see, this is the paradoxical. This is what I want to see. See the double standard of BJP. You know, the basis of Assam Accord is 25th March 1971. 17. That is the year. And on the basis of this cut off year, the entire Assam Accord has been built up. Now, Clause 6 is just a part of Assam Accord. What BJP has done? On one hand, they have negated the entire Assam Accord by shifting the entire basis of the Assam Accord. They have changed the goalpost and brought it to, took it forward to 2014, 31st of December. That means what? You have negated the entire Assam Accord. But and, and wait, on one hand, you have negated, you have just destroyed the Assam Accord. You are trying to destroy the Assam Accord. And again, you picked up a particular clause from that Assam Accord and trying to tell people of Assam that look, we are going to implement the 6A. Don't you see the... the but don't you think the clause is very important and it needs... This is important. This is important. But I want to tell you something. According to us, 25th of March 1971 is a cut-off part. Before that, anybody who came, a Hindu, a Muslim, a foreigner, whoever came, they would be given, uh, they are citizens of Assam, they are citizens of the country, they have been exercising their votes. So, Clause 6A will ensure the protection of the people and we consider anybody who came before 25th of March 1971 is an Assamese, a proud Indian, a citizen and we will give them all kinds of, uh, you know, uh, security, we will ensure that they live with their head high, you know. There should not be any kind of persecution. So, but Assam Accord was signed when the Congress was in power. The government in the center was Congress. The government in the state was Congress. And then you were in power for the longest period of time. Only in 2016, the BJP came to power. Why were these things not really taken to its logical conclusion? Assam Accord was implemented don't forget that though Assam Accord was uh, you know signed in 1985 for long 10 years Congress was not in power B A G P was yeah, in the power. AGP was in power yes, yes. Long but you were years. a political force no, no, we are political force we were demanding that that should be implemented and once the central government you know when Congress came to power in 2004 that is the time that Assam Accord was being implemented in Toto. The only point that probably was stuck was Clause 6. Clause 6. But 99% of the provisions of Assam Accord had already been implemented. Take the case of uh, Numaligar Refinery, take the, you know, Central Universities, take the, you know, border fencing. 99% jobs were completed. Sorry, I just want to ask you again back to, so if you come to power, let's say after tomorrow the Congress gets the numbers, you come to power, what will you do in so far as the implementation of Clause 6 is concerned? Of course, Clause 6 is very important, but while implementing this, we should not create, uh, you know, division among our people. We cannot single out somebody only because somebody is non-Assamese, somebody is a Bengali speaking Assamese, or somebody is probably a Muslim or Hindu, we are not going to do it. We are going to ensure that Assamese identity of the state will be protected in a very broad based manner, in a very inclusive manner. And that is the key to the success. And that is how we will implement Clause 6A. And I want to tell you something. In Assam Accord, it was saying about Assamese identity. That Assamese identity is very broad based, you know. 
So broad-based Assamese identity would ensure everybody will live in peace and at the same time we will hold the Assamiyatta flag aloft. Okay? Of course, Assam is the only land where Assamese can have an identity. And when I say Assamese, it's a very broad-based. Different people, different... So you're saying tribal the Assamese or the Ohomia identity actually caters to people that are part of the state, who are genuine citizens who have been in the state yes. and who have lived here. Yes. Uh, so these are the people that are identified as Assamese. Yes, of course. Of course. And it gives respect. It gives, uh, you know, uh, encouragement. To all other communities who can grow, they should grow in a very egalitarian concept. It's Assamese thing. Assamese is not just only you know Bordelo, Khoika, Hajarika, Gogoi that we only speak in uh, you know Assamese tongue. Not that. It's very broad based, and that is why you know when they say about Hindutva, our Hindutva is uh, Assamiyatta is very broad based, egalitarian. You know. Since time in We have the oldest culture, we yes, have the oldest, yes, uh, the, the, I mean, in terms of even religious or spiritual beliefs. And Mahapur Shankardev, he gave a new dimension to this, our thing, so broad based. Mahapur Shankardev embraced everybody, whether one is a Muslim or Hindu or anybody. But these guys, do you think sometimes these things are forgotten or people don't seem to connect because like you said Hong Kong Dev actually is this an egalitarian and all-inclusive view and beliefs that we have from him do you think sometimes these things people miss out or somewhere these things are getting lost of course because this they are trying to rewrite the history the BJP and RSS their main ploy they are trying to rewrite the history they are trying to rewrite the history of Assam you see, this uh, minister, he's a, I'm talking about Himanto Pharma again, the most communal politician we have ever had in Assam. Even during the partition, Assamese politicians were never communal, I'll tell you. But this guy tried to create division. But the Congress, I mean, I know what you're saying, okay, that's your uh, viewpoint, but the Congress has also been. Uh they have been sort of uh, accused of uh, appeasement, minority appeasement. No, and that, that is, is also true. communal in a way because the way that have been, uh, I, I mean, no, the Congress I, has I, been I, held I responsible for the longest period of time it was in power. Uh, minority appeasement has been uh, something that the Congress has been accused of and it has not been able to really answer convincingly enough to tell people that no, we don't do appeasement politics. See, if any particular Congress leader in the past tried to do minority appeasement, we may not agree with his or her deeds, but Congress party is a very rational political party. We try to give protection, security to every section of the thing. We don't follow any fascist mentality community on the basis of religion and persecute them and treat them as a second class citizen of the country or state. We have never done it. And there's another thing, don't forget, it is an avowed principle of the Congress party which was given to us by Mahatma Gandhi. What is this? The most backward, most downtrodden people should be given a hand and they should be hand-holding by the Congress party and they should be brought up so that they do not lag behind. If by doing this, if you try to help the most downtrodden, most isolated, economically, you know, uh, have not downtrodden, whether one is a Muslim or Hindu or whatever, even the, you know, minorities, Congress party always try to help them to get uplifted. And if you call this as so a So that minority, is expected of the oldest of course, party, but the they party, don't do it. Party, they, you see, BJP, BJP try to what? They try to persecute the Muslims only because they are Muslims. They have, you know, in the last four years, see, they have selectively carried out eviction targeting only the Muslims. You see, that is not... So you're saying that the Congress party is taking care of everyone. Congress party Congress does not party, distinguish between Congress who's a Muslim, who's a Hindu. No, Congress party will not distinguish on the basis of religion or language or anybody. Congress party would always protect. That is your belief that they have done this in Assam and they will continue to do this. Yes, fair enough, course, sir. So, fair enough. We'll just come to some of the things that you said before the elections and uh, how these things actually have been 
interpreted by different people or how this would have impacted your own uh, chances in the election. One of the things that you said, and this is, I think, uh, December last year, you had said, and this is in the national, uh, sorry, the, uh, the local papers, uh, it says Congress to face big loss if Ajanta quits. We're talking about Ajanta New York. And this has been attributed to you. So do you still hold this position that because Ajanta Niyog has shifted to the BJP, you had said that Congress will face a big loss. Do you think that would be one of the reasons if you lose the election? No, no, not at all. I'll tell you. But you said That's this. Right? No, this no, I said it. I said it. That was my apprehension. That was my apprehension because whatever I say, that was before Ajanta Niyog shifted to BJP. She but how has it changed? No, no, I, I, I want to tell you this. She had been my colleague. And she, in her eye, hold her in great esteem. Even now I hold her in great esteem. But she made a mistake by going to BJP. Fortunately for us, though I apprehend, you know, I was apprehensive that it would be lost. But actually, once she shifted to BJP, it has helped us. It has helped us and we, this time we are going to win from Bukaka, uh, Bulaga. You can see this. So in, in a span of just Two months or three months, things have changed so drastically. No, because you said that there would be a big loss. Now you're saying it has helped you. How has this happened? No, I say that was my apprehension. I didn't want. But your apprehensions were based on some on some uh, real, what I thought on some reality I, no, no, checks. I, I, no, no, no. Of course, initially, initially, you may be wrong, na. When you apprehend something, you may be. But it, why did you let them go? What was wrong? Why did they leave the party? When she, like you said, she, she turned out to be a very selfish leader. She just wanted to go for a greener future. Well, probably she was not happy with the, how the party was dealing with her. No, not that. Maybe I, I do not know about it. But then fact remains that she should have a steadfast, you know, attitude. You know, you know everything that she actually politically Congress party has given. But along with her, there were others who left the party. Maybe. There are there are many opportunists uh, in the party, Congress party also. They have gone. Anyways, so th there is you. Be, you are the chairperson of the campaign committee, and you led a campaign. And we must all accept, and this has been also written about, that the Congress's campaign, which initially looked a little lackluster, let's say, it really started to gain momentum. And towards the end, and today, when we are even looking at the exit poll, the Congress is not really far behind in most of the polls, and we never know what happens after tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But again. Uh, this was some time back, uh, a year and a half ago, when uh, the strategies were being made. You were actually caught on camera, and as was reported in the newspapers and in the media, that you actually were telling the, your leaders in the center that the AICC is indecisive most of the times, and that could actually cost you elections, I don't know about other states, at least in Assam. You had a belief no, like I, that. I, 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 that was a kind of a, that was a, you know, a comment that. But do you think the AICC, I mean, sorry, but do you think the AICC isn't, we've seen that happen in other states, the decisions by the AICC, AICC your leader, Mr. Rahul Gandhi, some of these decisions seem to come pretty late and which is why sometimes the Congress's campaign don't take off, like probably it used to do earlier. No, I don't uh, subscribe to that opinion of yours. Let me tell you one thing. Had Congress party not been decisive, we wouldn't have been able to, you know, put up such a stiff fight. Because it is AICC that backed us, helped us, and it is AICC by appointing Mr. Jitendra Singh to be our General Secretary in charge. And believe me, it is AICC who deputed the Chhattisgarh Chief Minister, Mr. Bhopesh Bagel, that was the decision. Right, sir. True, I totally and, agree. And we, and we dear, we dear support. We totally understand. But just again, going back, because this is important, because you are not any ordinary person. You are a state leader, a national leader, you are a parliamentarian, uh, and you speak uh, with conviction, you speak with power for the party, for the people of the state. But the exact thing that you said here, and I want to read out, you had told Mr. Harish Rawat at that point of time, that AICC is notorious for indecisiveness and should act fast if it wants to contest the 2021 elections seriously. That was not meant to be, you know, said for the public. It was a very smart thing of one of your media houses to stillingly, you know. Well, but you uh, said something that no, got caught I said on because it's a, it's a matter of uh, my, you know, little heated argument with him. 
because that time I was not happy. It happens. It happens in politics. But I have never castigated AICC. And AICC has, I have said it, AICC has taken very prompt decision. And that is why we could fight and we could capture power in Assam. All right. You've, uh, you've yourself also said in 2016 when you lost... Uh, uh, in Margarita, you said probably you had a disconnect with the people, which is why you could not win the election. You were a legislator from there from 1996 until... Uh, 2016, 2016 yeah. election four when, times, you, lost, when four you, times. you lost so you were in, you've won elections from there but then you said there were also allegations against you about how you were not addressing the issues of the coal mafia and the timber mafia over there uh, we know that you've been given the green uh, politician award so so many things that you have and then also there are allegations against you that says a green politician has not looked not looked after the environment they've been the mafias they're operating how will you react to these allegations no, and then to your own comment sir that you said you were disconnected with the people which made you lose the 2016 election see i will tell you you must uh, must understand that in electoral politics i had been winning from that particular constituency four consecutive terms once you know, you know seamlessly but then there's a thing called anti-incumbency. It's bound to happen. It will happen to anybody for that matter. That is what I say. That is anti-incumbency coupled by in 2016 when BJP started playing the communal politics in Margarita. In Margarita, I mean in Upper Assam, especially in Tinsukia district. Our support base, the Congress support base, I just want to give you one example. In 1985, in assembly elections, while the rest of Assam, especially, you know, Middle Assam and Lower Assam, everywhere, AGP was riding on the wave. You know, they were, they were getting maximum seats. But Tinsukia district, where my uh, assembly constituency lies, do you know? Tinsukia district, all in the, in the height of AGP's popularity in 1985, Tinsukia, all seats Congress won. That means what? The support base of the Congress party in uh, Tinsukia district, especially in Upper Assam, shifted towards BJP because of communal polarization. It's but not simple. Can we, can we just, I mean, I know it is, uh, people would say you're finding a scapegoat because would only communal politics actually sh turn away I your not, voters who actually stood by you for so long and voted I am for not you? finding a, commun a scapegoat. What I'm saying, these are the factors that contribute to and fact remains that we were in power. Did you not do no, enough? You listen, did to you, me, yes. you listen to me. We were in power at a stretch from 2001 to 2016. When you are in power at a stretch for 15 years, you are bound to have, uh, you know, uh, anti incumbency. But there's also pro incumbency that we see these days where the BJP actually wins election, they are in power, and pro incumbency is a thing that is also working these days. I mean, we cannot. It is not going to that. last. It is not going to last. I can take you, you know, Mr. Modi might have won again, but I can write it down for you. Just watch my word. In 2024, Modi will be booed out of the country. I'll tell you from the power. I'm telling you. Because now what's happening? Everywhere in social media, Modi resign is just swamping the social media and they are trying to hush it up. They have, they have asked the Twitter, they have asked the uh, Facebook to, you know, delete it. Why are they doing it? Just watch. Because, see, you can, you can sell opium, you can continue to do religious thing, you can develop a larger than life image. But finally, you have to address the major issues that affect the lives of the people. But have you been a constructive opposition? We all should take up. This is a collective responsibility. Do you think you... I am a very constructive thing, but... When I say you, sir, I mean your party. Yes, of course. Our party is very constructive. Everything the government does for the interest of the country, for interest of the nation, we are always with the government. We have said it.